Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast presented by Zwift, the online cycling platform that makes training fun. This is the Liège Baston Liège preview, men and women's coming up this weekend. I mentioned our show partner, Zwift. At the moment, Zwift wants to know your ultimate power up on Zwift. You can vote on their round one choices in the comments on Instagram. It's like a NCAA bracket if you follow American sports. And my personal one, no questions asked, is the Aero Boost. That's my favorite because I always get dropped on descents and I have to catch up. What's your one, Benji? It's fatter because uh, obviously <laughs> I'm not the lightest climber in the world and reducing my weight on a climb definitely gets me faster up that climb. So that's my pick. What was the one we said that we wanted to introduce? The Mario Kart blue shells or bananas? Yeah, the bananas to be able bananas. to like have negative power-ups for the competition. <laughs> but we're very dark minds in Onswift, so we'd like to uh, play uh, the cards uh, evil. I I still want to see them. I still think it'd be interesting to see them trialed in uh, Zwift racing. It'd be absolute carnage. Anyway, if you want to vote, you can go to Zwift's Instagram at go Zwift and put it in the comments on that post. The parkour for the women is kind of half of the course. It's from Baston to Liège, but the finale is the same. They have the Cote de la Redoute with about 30 kilometers to go, 2Ks, 9%. Rolly Terrain and then the Cote de la Rochelle for 1,300 meters, 10.1 percent. With that ball cell climb afterwards, which is where uh, Van der Brecher last year really put the dagger into Voss on that last climb after Rochelle for when Voss was trying to come back with Ludwig. There's then the plateau and descent to the flat finish, 142 Ks. The start list. It doesn't say Voss is here, but we have SD Works with. Uh, Demi Follering, who won this race last year after AVDB lit it up on the climbs for her. She beat Van Vleuten and Co. in a sprint. She's got Blanca Vash with her, as well as uh, Anna Shackley, the official like Mullen, Majerus, strong team. There's DSM with Lippert looking really good with Mackay. FDJ do have Ludwig. It says on PCS that she's starting, but she didn't start flesh. They have Chapman Cavalli. Brown, Muzic, Borgli as well. I think I think Cavalli should be favorite. There's never a market for this, but who's got a better sprint out of Vollering and Cavalli, Benji? Because that really plays into how SD Works should go on Rocha Faucon. I think it's rather close, but I also want to just look at SD Works first and see how they ride it because you mentioned last year you mentioned the fact that von der Brechen was such a key rider in bringing Vollering that victory because she was the one that controlled every attack on Boncel and after Boncel towards the line as well and that is something that I'm not sure they have necessarily in this year's team yes Moulin Pasio should be good enough to get over those climbs she was not good enough to close down the move of Cavalli when it comes to Amstel for example then we've got Majerus. I feel like this Baku might be too hard for her to be in the final of this race. Nefisha Black might be a key aspect that is in the last 20 minutes, 25 minutes of this race. But will she make the final cut? I'm like, ah, oh, I'm on the edge for that. Anna Shackley feels like the rider they sent forward. And Blanca Vaj has been acting as a domestique so far in this Ardennes. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's similarly in this race. So I just wanted to add there that the race of all the other favorites or all the other outsiders depends on which teams can control any attacks. And I feel when I look at all these teams, there is not that one team where I'm like, Jesus, they are so bloody strong that they can control everything. And that will allow opportunities of riders that go into early moves to perhaps make it further than expected. Or do we think that Movistar will play a huge role in the sense that Van Vleuten might be able to make this race very hard to prevent it to become a situation like Amstel and Fledge where she can't drop them on a 1k climb because these climbers at Liège are longer. I think they should want to keep it pretty tight and then have her go solo on Rochelle Faucon and try and attack there. She can't, she's not going to be a favorite or have great chances in a flat sprint against Cavalli and 
Flowering, she can still win it, of course. She's got Sierra here, who's been unbelievable. Yelena Yen- Erich, Sarah Martin, I think it was good for her in San Sebastian, where she won Alarud and Patino. I don't know. It's Trek, who I think, with Longaboard Gini, who came third last year. They don't have Ruth Winder anymore, who was good in the Ardennes. They got Taylor Wills, Lucinda Brand, Sheeran Van Anroy, who was like 12th, 13th in flesh, versatile rider, and Van Dyke. I think they're going to be aggressive early. And you remember Mulman, who they used SD Works on Redute to soften up the field. They now have to hold her back. No, she goes higher up in the hierarchy, but that means, yeah, as you said, Benji, who who goes and makes Redute hard for SD Works? Is it Anna Shackley? Is it Neve Fisher Black? Can they do that? Canyon Shram. The team is so much stronger than last year, but they just – it's Nivia Doma who's not been as strong. Royak as Paladin Shabby have been doing what we expected of them, really good hill classics riders. But Nivia Doma, I don't know. I think Benji, Kenya Strand, it'll be kind of like flesh. They'll try and get those riders in a breakaway and then see who can control it. But as you said, I'm struggling to see the Anna Vannebregen type on the start list who will just keep a group ahead. So... I, I really don't know how this race will play out. I think I think Cavalli will could even counterattack after Boncel if she makes it. Or is this are these climbs too hard? And Vollering, who we saw on Sharav accelerating uh, yesterday, it'll be her going clear with Van Vloyten again. Oh, I don't know. I feel like uh, when I look at the scenario in this race, yes. Von Vleuten making it hard to get it with Volring is definitely an option. They can make that stuff happen, but I'd rate Von Vleuten better than Volring when it comes to a harder parkour, personally. And the thing is, we've seen the strategy of SD works when it comes to getting away with Von Vleuten. They just sit on the wheel of Von Vleuten and hope that they can beat her in the sprint. And they don't have a Kopecky here necessarily as D-Works, but Volring has a decent enough sprint. And when it comes to a 1v1 versus Von Vleuten, I think it's always a Ah, I think 60% of the time, Volring wins. We saw the opposite at Omlop, for example. So it doesn't always go into the uh, advantage of Volring, and that's why I think they will always sit up in the wheel of of Von Vleuten whenever they are gone with her, because they know that when the others come back from the group behind, that on paper, Volring should still be faster than who is behind, except for perhaps Cavalli, like you mentioned. But she might get new teammates like a Mormon to try and roll over attacks on Van Vleuten. But when it comes to FDG, we're looking at that team with, let's say, Uther Ludwig is not at the start, because I think that scenario is also likely, or at least that she's not up to standards yet after that entire situation of being ill. Then they've got Cavalli and Brown. And Brown, didn't she like podium this race two years ago? Yeah, second in LBL uh, yeah. 2020. I think that was a situation where a group went ahead. That had an advantage on the actual peloton, and Dignan and Brown used that as a situation to get ahead from that point onwards, and that's how Brown got an advantage there. I think that FDJ has got such a, a, a deep team now with a Chapman and a Brown where they can play those cards earlier and keep Cavalli for the last climb, for example, because honestly, Chapman has been great, and in RVV she showed that in a harder range she can be sent forward and still play a role in the final when it comes to uh, LBL as well, for example. So I think that's also a key to getting Cavalli a victory is having perhaps another rider into the final and sending them forward to get them in the final is uh, a bigger chance than trying to follow the attacks of Van Vleuten and so forth with a Brown and a Chapman because that's where I see, I see an issue for that. I think one of the strongest teams, which you might not think of for controlling proceedings, is actually DSM, Mackay. Uh, they've had, I don't know if Labou is starting, as well as Kirchman. The Lippets, their leader, she has looked better this year. At Amstel, I think she came third, and uh, she looked okay at flesh. She blew up on the murder weave. That was quite steep for her. She This is a flat finish, remember? She got a decent or quite a good sprint, maybe just behind volering level. She just needs to be less aggressive. Like before the murder weave, she was chasing the move uh, of Castelline, I think, or whoever it was. Yep. No, Shackley maybe or Nee Fisher Black, and that cost her. Uh, and the same goes for Yara Castelline. 
on Plantapura. She still managed a good result at Flesh, but she was in the break. Then she was chasing moves from the G- from the favourites group, and then she still managed a good result. I think she needs to play it as if she's a top favourite and see if she can get a podium here. Um, if that's possible, or even a top five would be a fantastic result. But I think Lippert really, like she, I can't remember, she didn't do this race last year, and then in 2020 it was after COVID, so it was in a weird time slot. So this is a race that should really, really suit her, and, yeah, I think she should be just a little bit less aggressive and just try and follow in Rocha Foucault and then um, see if she can get a top three in the sprint. But... I'm going to go with a very simple pick, Benji. I think Van Lurten drops everyone on Rocha Faucon, solos it away the victory, and SD Works are not strong enough to do anything about it. I think that's a, a very plausible scenario. And um, it's hard to see another scenario. Well, it's very possible that another scenario happens, but the other scenarios are so similarly possible that it's difficult to point at one and say oh this rider can take it or this rider can take it and that's why i've got a difficult time picking another rider for this race but the amount of cold bloodedness that marta cavalli had on fledge means that she still had quite a bit left for that final kick to the line ahead of van vleuten there and therefore i i'm gonna stay in the gap of cavalli and that's mainly because i also hope that we see a rider take out all three are dense in a row because I swear I, I saw a stat yesterday where it, it is the first time since 2005 that any rider, men's and women's, takes both Amstel and Flesh. How long ago will it have been to take all three? And I, I root for that. I want to see that happen. So Marta Cavalli is my main pick and my outsider is... I want to see Shirin van Androoy as an outsider here because she's been really good when it comes to like top 15 places. I'd like to see her in the top 10. Something like that. Benji once again proving he's not a real Belgian or maybe he's just not recognizing the Walloon results. I think Gilbert swept the Ardennes in 2011. So, um, yeah. Did he win all, all three? I think he won. What did he win? Liège, Flesch, Amstel, Brabant. He did. <laughs> he did a oh, four. snap. I forgot about <laughs> it. <laughs> but, yeah, this is a, it's a, I was thinking it's a crazy opportunity for Gavali to make uh, to put her name in the history books, like it's crazy to win Flesh and Amstel, let alone uh, Liege, would be insane. The other option, they're the, like I said, for Ineos in the men's, Trek don't have a top favorite, but Trek as a team are a top favorite. They were aggressive, as Benji mentioned, with Diagnan in the race when she won in 2020. They had Longo Borghini, aggressive in Trofeo Binder, a hilly race last year, and she's in good form as we saw the Paru Bay winner. Longo Borghini going solo with Van Dyke marking behind early is is the way they win because her punch on Rochelle Foucault, it ain't the same as Vollering and uh, Van Vleuten. She can follow maybe, but yeah, that's how I think they should try and play it. Uh, but yeah, Dark Horses, Castellan. I think I don't know who she is. Benji probably has a better handle. Is she a, a CX rider? Yeah, she's a, a cyclocross rider, and uh, yeah, it's she's a cyclocross rider for Planter Pura. But you're putting me on the spot when it comes to my cyclocross knowledge, and I watch like three cyclocross races <laughs> per year, so I don't know what to respond at this the point. So I'm going CX to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pretend that she uh, that I know her to the bone for when it comes to uh, how she is at these cyclocross races and. See that she's a relatively good rider there? <laughs> she looked good in flesh. Anyway, that's our Women's Liège preview. We've gone the pretty boring option, but most likely AVV Sol on Rocha Faucon. Thanks, as always, to Zwift for supporting the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, and we'll see you with the recap of both the men and women's races on Sunday. Ciao.